Hello, Connie here with Music Mentory. Today we're going to do a little composition and we're going to develop a motif using retrograde motion and augmentation. Let's get started. Here is the page in the workbook that we are on. It's 74, I believe. I'm just going to scroll up. Hope you don't get dizzy from this. This is the section we're on in the workbook and there is a link to the workbook in the comments below or in the description box below and if you don't have the workbook you just need manuscript paper to be able to do these activities okay we learned about motifs and melody these were how we went from these different kinds of moods in previous videos we've created a motif then we learned to develop that motif and now we are on right here where that melody is going to meet harmony we mix the two together Last video we did sequence and inversion. This time I'm going to do retrograde and augmentation. There are a lot more in the workbook, but I'm going to stop here just so you understand how to do it. Then you can do the rest on your own. We use retrograde inversion, diminution, note scramble, rhythmic scramble. So here we are on, whoops, retrograde and augmentation. Okay. I thought of a little motif just before starting the video, so let me just draw that out. It's this. Okay, we're going to be in 4-4 time and in the key of C. And the motif, oh, let me draw my bar lines just so I know where my boundaries are. I find that really helpful so that I don't um, take up too much space and then have to squish notes in because I like a standard four measure stanza. So the first measure is going to be the motif. C as a quarter note, E as a quarter note, and then D up to F as two eighth notes, and G as a quarter note. Okay. One thing I'd like you to really get out of this video is how to match the melody with the harmony because it's not going to sound good if you just put, okay, I'm going to have this be a one chord, then I'm going to go to a two chord, then I'll do a seven, and then, you know, and then you do your melody wherever it wants to go. They have to match so it sounds good. Okay, the in 4-4 four, four time, the strong beat is on one, right here, and the secondary strong beat is count three, so that's a little bit weaker. This is the stronger of the two. You want the strongest beat to be in the chord of the harmony. So we're going to start with the one chord. I'm just going to get us started here, then we'll come back and fill this in C chord, because we're in the key of C, the one chord, and the right hand has a C, and then it has an E, this one is a non-harmonic tone, so it's going to clash, but it resolves on a G. Here's what that sounds like. Here's the clash. See, that doesn't sound good, but it's an eighth note. We go quick, and we resolve to a G, which is part of the chord. So that can work, but one and the second most important would be three to have actually on the chord. For sure one, which is what we did here. But let's go ahead and we'll, I'm going to develop the melody and then come back and create the harmony. I know I want to end on a 5 or a 5-7 here. And I know at the end I want to do a 5 or a 5-7 to 1. All right. Da, 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 da. Let's, I know we're supposed to use retrograde, but for right now I want to use sequence. So we'll have a lot of stuff in here. Let's just scoot this up one note, one step. We're going to start the whole thing on D, F, E, G. So it's going to be the same thing. This is going to be part of the chord. What if we could harmonize this with D, F, A, the two chord. And that works with our chord functions. It goes one, a tonic, to a subdominant, predominant. Okay, now what's this going to be? Hmm. What if we just keep crawling up? 
that'd be good because it would lead right to this. No, I don't want to go to a C. Okay. All right. Sequence. We're just going to sequence it up one more time. I think that sounds cool. Just climbing up the scale. F A. And it, it really sounded like you were going to resolve to the C, which would make this half cadence kind of a surprise. Like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. You're not going to get the C. So this is a three chord. So we've gone um, tonic, subdominant, tonic. This is going to be dominant. Um, let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to, here's the liberty I'm going to take. Instead of, I could do dominant, but then I'm going to, I'm trying to do retrograde right here, like bringing this kind of motif back down. So I'm going to, this is where you have your creative license. I know I want to end on a five, but I'm going to sneak in a one chord for the first half of this measure and then a five on the second half. We'll see how that sounds. That way we can give our ear that C, but we're going to hop down. But instead of a, a retrograde, actually. Okay. One, it would start here and then go down a step. And then down a skip as eighth notes. No, I like that. But then instead of, see right here, going retrograde, we would go up a step and then down a skip. We're not going to do up a step. We're going to go back up a skip so that this fits with the five chord, G and B. Because if I just went up a step, it would be A, F. I don't want to end on a four chord. I want to end on a five chord. So I shifted the motif just a little bit. It's the same basic shape in retrograde motion here. And then I'm going to end. Let's see. Let's put these chords in. Here's a E minor chord. And then we're going to end on a C. And then a five. Okay, we'll play that and see how that sounds. well enough that'll work okay now down here let's start out repeating remember we're doing we've been doing parallel and this is a general period we're not following all of the characteristics of a period we're just learning the very basics but this one we're kind of repeating the same so it starts out parallel so this is going to be the same the dumb then d f g hmm Repeat the second one the same, a D, F, A chord, and copy the D, F, E, G, eighth notes, A. Now, this has to be a 5 or a 5, 7. So we're on the A. Let's just lead that up to a B because a B is part of the 5, 7. Um, That would be perfect if we just use the notes of the 5-7 and we kind of do, oh, no, we were going to do an augmentation. Okay, I almost forgot. Here we go. Let's do, um, yeah, we'll do that coming back down. Ah, that'll work. One, two, three, four. Nope, it won't. Okay, we're going to have to do our augmentation here. Mm -hmm. 
So erase. I hope you always compose with pencil. And I was in my mind, I was thinking, that's fine, I'll just save the augmentation for here, but it's not going to fit. So uh, let's do. Ah. That's not right. Just start one more time. We're going to start an augmentation. So augmentation means all the notes are doubled. So instead of a quarter note here, it would be a half note up to a half note. That takes the whole first measure. And then quarter, quarter, half note, which is interesting here because the D and the F can still be on the two chord, but we've got a change here. Alright, does that sound okay? You want to stay on the two or do you want to change to five? Uh, let's just stay on the two. It creates a little more tension because it doesn't belong. So we'll stay there. Then let's um, we're going to do this kind of shape or uh, the rhythmic version anyway um, of retrograde. One, two, and one one, two, and three, four. So we will do this same rhythm and the notes of the five, seven chord, they're just not in exactly the same shape. It's not going to go here and then skip back up and down. It's going to go just because I think this sounds better. What is it? One, two, three, and Hey, I changed a little. So it does follow that basic. There's a big leap here, though, and then a little. And then we'll just end on C. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Put in the chords here and the 5-7 here. And back to a 1 chord here. Okay, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to kind of fancy up the left hand a little. Okay, so we want the first, remember, most important thing to get out of the video is how to match the melody and the harmony. We always want the first count of each measure, and this is a chord, so that's going to kind of be the first one, sorry, these circles are, to be a part of the chord. That's going to make it blend and sound together. The second most important one is this count three, which in this motif that I've chosen, doesn't always work, but that's okay. As long as we have count one, that's the most important one to, to have together. Okay, like a perfect cadence, this is the end.